Okay, guys, let's talk briefly about leather dye, okay? So, first of all, dyeing leather is like dyeing anything. Um, there's different techniques, there's different chemicals, there's all kinds of different ways you can do it. Um, so, we're going to just briefly go over it. Thing one, dyeing leather serves basically no purpose in terms of protecting the leather. The top coat or finish you put on the leather is what's going to protect the leather. We're really just coloring it. Leather over time will darken from this pinky color to this, what we've dyed color. It will actually naturally come this color and eventually even darker browns. Okay. So a lot of times we're just sort of in a way simulating that attractiveness or wear. Now, of course, if I'm going to do it in green or red or some unnatural color, that's a different story. But the bottom line is the leather dye is really for looks. Okay. However, that being said, it's also one of the more difficult things to get um, uh, to handle and master because it's a little bit tricky. So some considerations, first of all, are what type of leather are you using? Vegetable tan leather is tanned, okay, meaning the leather is stabilized um, using vegetable tannins, uh, roots, vegetables, basically those type of products to create this. Um, and it's a very easy workable surface for the most part, even has a certain smell to it. The other types of dyes, um, uh, leathers are chrome tanned and aniline tanned. They're already dyed. They come that way. So when you're trying to dye over that to say darken a color, it's a completely different kind of thing. And the base for the actual um, dye itself it could be different in this case those are usually spirit based dyes so they're using some sort of alcohol or some other thing as a medium the thing that carries the dye and helps you to apply it remember all dyes are basically some sort of powder or mineral or something that you're then applying in a liquid form on top of the leather dye okay so when we're looking at those you have to consider the type we're going to be we'll briefly talk about the different types of dyes and then we're going to dye a piece of leather i primarily use alcohol or water-based dyes because it's just better to not have to smell it and it has been effective in what i use it stabilizes even though it's water-based um, i use the echo flow products from tandy um, this is water stain, which goes on differently than their Echo Flow, which you can sort of paint on. So let's talk about those. And then the other options is a company called Feebings, F-I-E-B-I-N-G-S. They have a alcohol-based, spirit-based dye that also works very well. Let's talk about how do you apply the, 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 uh, the dye. A bunch of different ways that you can apply uh, the dye to the leather. Some people even use airbrushes to use to apply the dye. I have not really played with that very much. Most of mine has been manual application. Um, one of the ways, of course, is to use like a brush or a dauber to basically just brush it on. The problem with that is you get a lot of brush strokes. And when you get certain color dyes will always blend easily and you can't even really tell. Others are a real pain in the butt, and you're going to see every single rub or stroke that you do use on there. So you have to also consider that when you're when you're dyeing something. We're going to talk about um, sponge application, which is a little bit different and works very well with the water dye, the water stain application, because we're actually rubbing the leather in there. Now, a key thing to understand whether you're using the EcoFlow product which is the more liquid form, or the Feebings uh, spirit-based, those penetrate a bit more than the water stains do. The, the fibers in the leather actually absorb the stain, which is good. Um, it will sink in different. The problem is the application is a little harder when you're applying that layer that's going to suck into the leather. And depending on the kind of leather, you may have an uneven look because certain parts of the leather are just composed differently. Um, think about thicker and thinner skin uh, and therefore you're going to get a modeled effect. So sometimes it's actually a little more difficult. I prefer this type of dye because I can um, apply it in any number of ways and it, it performs pretty well. So let's get into that. Okay guys, so leather dyeing. You may notice I've got gloves on. Here's the thing. Leather is skin. 
and leather gets dyed so your skin can get dyed so unless you don't want your hands being different colors then you it's really advisable for you to wear gloves um, it does wash off it just takes a while in terms of a lot of these water-based solutions there's negligible harm to your body so that's a key thing you want to have something down to protect it i have some newspaper some people use plastic bags you want a relatively free area free of obstacles because you're going to be rubbing the material. You don't want to knock something over and ruin another project or the project you're working on because your dye gets spilled over. That sucks. Okay, so this is all about lessons learned. Okay, and I have knocked over a few bottles, so you want to have those as far away as possible. Lighting is key. You want to have a pretty decent overhead lighting so you can see the variations so that as you're applying your dye, you can understand, oh, I need to hit this area a little bit more to even it out, okay? You also have to be familiar with how your dye works. Always, 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 if you can, take a little piece of it and practice somewhere else um, just to see that it's not, sometimes even the dye lots are different, so you just want to be conscious of that so that when you, it gets time to dye stuff, you can be prepared for that, okay? So gloves, you got your dye, you have some means of application. In this case, um, with the water stain, I actually keep each bag has a particular kind of stuff in it. So in this case, it's medium brown is in this little bot in here and it's already got the dye on it. So it saves me from getting a brand new sponge. It saves money, but also there's already a lot of dye in here so that in some ways it'll actually save some of the dye and I'm not wasting it by refilling a sponge, so to speak. All right, lots of little ways that we can save time. Hey guys, we're getting started. So this is sort of my target color. It's never gonna be always 100%, but I kind of want this sort of lightish medium brown. All right, so we're gonna get started. We have our sponge and we have our dye. Notice there's a little squirty tip, which makes, for, uh, makes it easier to apply the dye and what the first thing we're going to do here let's tilt the camera so that you guys can see a little bit better okay and let's dye this front part okay so we just uh, apply some in here put some on top i always it's it's on there i give it a little shake to let it get into the sponge a little bit because if I don't, I'm going to have a big glob of dye on the top. And wherever it first makes contact, it's going to absorb there and be darker. So we kind of want to do that. And we want to do it quickly to get the dye spread around. Okay. Now, all I'm doing is rubbing this on. Okay. And work quickly because it is water-based. So evaporation, things like that are still a factor because we used a groover we want to kind of press in a little bit harder where the groove is where our channel for our tool our tooling our um, stitching is going to be and there you go it's that's a pretty consistent we got a spot there that's a little darker and then we can even that out a little bit now knowing the different capacities and uses of the dyes that you are using is important um, knowing like i know for example that this particular dye the water stain and this particular color is going to dye a lot lighter when it's dry than when we first apply it some dyes when they apply are going to look pretty close to the color that they actually are so you need to know with those dyes what's going to happen you need to know the different kind of colors that you can get because if I hit this with another shot, I'm going to darken up the leather. So you have to be conscious of that. I want to kind of keep everything the same. So think about how many coats you're giving something when you're dyeing it so that you can be consistent because this will build up. The difference between this and the other dyes is I rub this on and it kind of gets into the pores a little bit more. Okay, I'm going to go and dye the rest of this. Um, but another key component is don't forget to dye the edges. Um, it's kind of a pain to go back in and do it later. Um, so I try to do that. You do not have to dye the backs on um, the inside. I don't tend to, but some people do. That's a personal choice. It will stiffen the leather up a little bit more than not dyeing it. 
Okay, and notice this is what your fingers would be covered with if you had if I hadn't worn gloves. Okay, I was talking about how the dye you don't want to leave it sit on the, the leather too much because it'll absorb, and you can kind of see there's some spots. There's a spot where it actually dripped on it and I didn't get to it in time. And then coming up here, there's a big old blob. Now I'd have to apply more dye to kind of even that out, but this is a strap and it's really not that crucial. And once you put the top coat and it dries off a little bit, it won't be quite as obvious.